you're not even getting an intro today. You're not even getting an intro. <laughs> That's how mad I am. So in this video, I read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and uh, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. So there's that. This entire video is going to be a vlog style video where I sit and read this book and try to tell you <laughs> what's going on, full spoilers, as well as reacting to each little update that I give. If you haven't read this book and you want to read it, definitely go read it and then come back to this video because like I said, I am spoiling the entire book. But you'll see as the video goes on, I get more and more frustrated and feral and I just get annoyed. So there was so much about this book that absolutely did not make sense and I just could not even fully explain what was happening because I didn't even understand what was going on because there were so many like plot holes and things wrong. Um, so before you comment down below, I already feel the need to defend myself or you want to comment down below and say that you don't like my reviews. That's fine. There are a thousand other people on YouTube that have reviewed and spoiled this book. Go watch them. Okay. <laughs> I kind of gave up. You'll see. I kind of like give up halfway through giving like the full in-depth synopsis because I, I was just over it and I could no longer s spend energy on this book, <laughs> okay? So yeah, there are probably a million people that explain this book much better than me, but uh, if you wanna hear a rant, <laughs> stick around because I have a long one. Nothing I love more than a nice, long, hard, core rant. So I'm sick and I'm in this like huge sweater <laughs> like a polar bear. I might um, die because I feel like I have a fever now. <laughs> so I might have to take this off. But anyways, I um, just started this book. I'm about 50 pages in. I'm on chapter four. So so far, I don't have many thoughts. Like it's okay so far. I'm not loving it or hating it. Like I don't it's too early for me to tell. It's very fast paced, like things were already happening from chapter one. So I love that aspect because I feel like most fantasy is probably a slow burn. Um, but I liked that this is super fast paced so far. We have our main character, Violet, and she has a sister named Mira and her mom. I don't know her mom's name. Her mom's a skank ass hoe. But, um, she is attending this college. It's like a war college. So I guess when they turn 20, I'm not really sure how this works yet, <laughs> but I guess when they turn 20, they attend this like war college and decide what kind of like military style they want to use. So they select their branch of military service and Violet's entire life, her dad was training her to be in the scribe, you know, like the smarty pants, they read and write, you know, and um, her mom is, her mom works at the college, she's a general, and her father passes away, and her mom is like, nope, you're not going to be in the scribe quadrant, I'm putting you in the writer's quadrant where she has to ride dragons. And apparently it's super dangerous, like a lot of people die. And her sister Mira is like super nervous about the fact that their mom is forcing Violet to be in the writer's quadrant because she's like short and frail and weak and has like medical issues and she's like, I don't think she's cut out for this. You have to be like really strong and tough. We learned that her, she had a brother, Bren, Brennan, who died um, being a dragon rider, I believe, and her father died from a heart attack. Um, her sister basically warns her to not talk to anyone that's in like the second or third year of their classes. She basically tells her be weary of everyone, don't make friends with anyone, like because people just will randomly kill you at the school. I don't know. Uh, they do have this close childhood friend named Dane who's in his second year so he's like helping her out a little bit and of course he's like hot now. And then she also says 
be careful of this guy Zayden I think he's in his third year I don't remember but this is just like be careful because if he finds out who you are he's going to kill you so of course the first day like it's construction conscription cons day <laughs> and they all have to like cross this narrow little bridge and people fall off and die and she sees this like super hot guy and of course who is it it's Zayden the one that her sister told her to stay away from and he notices her and he's like I know who you are apparently her brother Brendan was killed by his father and then in turn Violet's mother executed his father I think that's what happened and you know Dane's trying to help her out. There's this guy named Jack that tries to kill her. Like, this is just wild. Like, what kind of wild ass school is this where people are killing each other? It doesn't make sense. Things don't really make sense so far. Like, I'm kind of struggling a little bit to, like, understand really what's going on with all these, like, different terms and, like, things that are happening. That's just, like, the fantasy aspects of it I'm like wait a second like I have questions that I hope are answered she has this friend named Rhiannon that she meets anyways Dane accepts Violet and Rhiannon into his squad and then very shortly his squad is moved to fourth wing where Zayden oversees everyone and is trying to kill her so that's it that like that a lot has happened in just 50 pages you see what I mean like I'm trying to be as brief as possible and like I don't know how to do that but so far like it's okay I like it I don't dislike it it's moving along um we'll see how I feel as the book goes on obviously I feel like she's there's going to be some kind of like romance between her and Zayden right like it's always the guy that's trying to kill these women that they're like oh but he's just so hot <laughs> so we'll see that's going to be completely ridiculous if that happens but you already know right um okay so I will read a little bit and then get back to you once I have like actual thoughts okay hi so it's the next day I got a little bit further into fourth wing I read some last night and then I was just I'm like sweaty <laughs> because I don't feel well but I don't even think what am I doing? It's not even that I'm sick. I think I'm just severely allergic to my dog who is a husky German Shepherd Akita and her fur is everywhere. <laughs> so I'm not having a great time. Um, and I was just wrapping um, Christmas presents for a while. And while I was doing that, I listened to the audiobook a little bit. So I got to chapter 10, that is page 115. And I'm starting to have thoughts. So the pacing did slow down a little bit um, since the first like 50 pages, but I I started really liking this and getting into it. It kind of gives a little bit of like a Harry Potter vibe, but in college. Um, but with that being said, it does feel a little bit YA. Like it does, it just feels like these are teenagers. It doesn't really feel like I'm reading about people in their 20s to me I don't know so basically they start classes up there sorry the cat is in here and on the tripod so they start classes and you know there are some classes that are about like history and knowledge and then some classes where they have to fight like fight each other and they're, they're like trying to kill each other um, while people are trying to kill Violet because of her mom and they're trying to get revenge for like the things that her mom has done there was a like journal that her sister Mira gave her from their brother Brennan that is basically telling her everything that she's going to like go through at the school so she's able to use that to her advantage to basically like poison people before matches so that way she wins etc like she's cheating a little bit okay um one night she does come across Zayden and this girl Imogen and then Jack the three people that have been like actively hating her and trying to kill her she does discover them kind of talking and plotting and planning little schemes and saying that they want to kill her so Zayden um finds that she knows what's going on and basically exchanges a favor if she keeps quiet. You learn a little bit more about the dragons and how they bond to the humans and less dragons are bonding to humans and they each 
dragon gives you like a power, etc. Like Dane can read people's recent memories if he touches their temples, etc. So that's basically it. And then um, the really freaking cringy part, this is starting to get really cringy for me. And this is exactly why I said it feels a little YA to me is because she is fighting um, Zayden or whatever. And she's like, oh, he's so hot. He's the most gorgeous man I've ever seen, but he's like trying to kill me, but he's like so hot. Oh my God, he's on top of me. We're fighting and he wants me dead, but like, oh, I would love to fuck him right now. Like, what? What? This bitch is, like, low-key dumb. Like, our main character is low-key dumb. And she's like, but I, I really swear I don't love toxic men, though. Like, Dane is kind of hot, too. But, like, Zayden, I would just love to fuck him right now. Like, bitch he's trying to kill you like i mm, and like if he wants her dead so badly like why is he like oh, keep it a secret just fucking kill her like it it just low-key doesn't make sense like it's starting to not make sense to me our main character is making weird questionable decisions and thoughts in her head and like this Zayden guy is like a villain, but he's not villainous. <laughs> like he's not scary. I don't really, uh, this is exact. like what I thought was going to happen is exactly what's going to happen. Am I a freaking scientist? Do I have a PhD <laughs> or is this predictable? And then when they're like fighting or whatever, she shoots arrows at him and he's like, oh, you're quite a violent little thing, aren't you? So now he calls her violence instead of violent. <laughs> Gag me with a fucking fork. Gag me with a fucking butcher knife. Okay, <laughs> like I, hmm, I really hate this man. I really do. I hate Zayden. I'm gonna say it right now. I hate him. All you little stands out there, I hate this man. The more that I sit here and think about it, the angrier that I'm becoming that this main character is such a dumb twat. Oh, this man could kill me. He wants to kill me. He hates me. He hates my mom. But like, I want to fuck him. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of these romance subplots with unhealthy relationships, with unhealthy, mentally unstable main characters. This girl needs therapy. She doesn't need to be in a war college. She needs therapy. Like, Jesus fucking, oh my God. I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> Hi children. It is probably like 10 days later. I <laughs> took a little break from reading this to finish up my other books for November. So I'm diving back into this. I read a little bit yesterday. We're going to kind of catch up. I'm on page 200. And like, this is starting to get really ugh for me. This is really, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. <laughs> so um, basically what happens, excuse me, I am like really sick. My stomach is absolutely killing me. I need like a whole GI workup. I have to wait two months now to get testing done and I'm like not okay. <laughs> so if I seem off, that is why. But um trying to remember what the hell happened oh they've been like going to these classes and you know learning how to ride a dragon and people are dying and blah 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 so <clears throat> after that they go to kind of like meet the dragons like the dragons pick which rider they want to bond with or they can choose not to bond um so they just kind of walk through and then the dragons observe and see like who they want to bond with. I just said the same thing twice. So um, there's this little gold dragon named Anaranda, I believe. Um, and this little gold dragon, he like doesn't have any talons. It's really weak. It's just like this little weak dragon that nobody wants um and of course the evil guys like jack i don't know if i mentioned jack but he's the son of a bitch um <laughs> they try to like 
gang up and they want to kill this dragon. But our main character, what the hell is her name? Violet. <laughs> she uh, kind of stands up for the dragon and stops them. And in the process of doing that, this huge black dragon named Taryn, 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 um, comes down and it's like this rare dragon that's been like refusing to bond with people for all these years. And this dragon comes down and is like, hey, you were super courageous in like protecting my little friend here. So I'm going to bond with you. And then like the little golden one bonds with her as well. So now she has two dragons and I think she's like the only person that two dragons have ever bonded with. Um, and she's like struggling to stay on this dragon because she's so small and weak and frail and this dragon is huge, blah, blah, blah. Dane, is that his freaking name? Dane randomly just comes over and kisses her. <laughs> Haven't seen Dane. Where has Dane been for 50 pages? Don't know. Dane, don't know him. But he just comes over and kisses her and she's like, I didn't even like that. <laughs> I've been waiting 20 years for that and I didn't like it. <laughs> poor Dane, poor Dane. Of course, why would she like the nice guy, you know? Like, you can't just like the nice guy that's been waiting for you since childhood. You have to go with the fuck boy, right? So, <laughs> poor Dane. <laughs> Dane is... Um... Yeah, for once, like, I just want these girls to be like, oh, I'm so in love with that line cook over there. He's so hot. Like, the line, listen, I am a sucker for nice guys who look like line cooks, okay? Like, the line cook energy. <laughs> Can't deal with this, oh, but he's so hot and has muscles. No, 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 no. He has to look like a line cook or he's out. <laughs> also has to be a comedian. Just saying. Just saying. Literally an actual comedian. Anyways, um... Oh, 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 I forgot a part. Um, and then we find out Zayden, the hot evil guy, <laughs> his dragon is mates with Taryn. Is that the freaking dragon's stupid name? Um, the two of them are mates. So they can't, I, I don't know if one happened if something happens to one of them, something happens to the other, or something like that. Like, they're all kind of bonded. So that's why Zayden's trying to keep Violet alive, because their dragons are, like, mates. So they're all, they're kind of all bonded together, so he can't let anything happen to her now, even though he wanted to kill her. Um, he can't anymore. So that's that. We all know where this is gonna go. I'm really not looking forward to this stupid romance subplot. Thing that's super like interesting is happening where I'm like, oh yeah, this is a five star book. You know, like I, I don't really see the hype so far. Okay, I just, I need to vent. I need to vent. Nothing has really happened. Um, it's just like a lot of dialogue they, they just talk to each other. It's so annoying. These people, they literally just sit around and talk and then the fucking dragons, they, they can telepathically communicate with her and she they're in her head and sassy and she talks back to them in her head and oh my god and she can't ride the dragon. I can't, I can't deal with this because this main character reads so fucking YA. Like, I mean, this girl's supposed to be 20 and reads like she's 12 and a half. Like, that's the problem that I'm having. And I, I'm like, I'm ready to, I, I, my blood is like boiling because I'm so annoyed by this book. I just hate the way that she reads like she's 12, but it's supposed to be like, she's supposed to be an adult. You know what I mean? Oh my god. And then this fucking guy Zayden reads like he's 30. It's like really, really bizarre. And I just, I, I, I don't know what to do. L listen to this. 
my gaze snaps to Zayden and my chest tightens. So freaking beautiful. Apparently my body doesn't care that he's as dangerous as they come in the quadrant because heat rushes through my veins, flushing my skin. He's using a dagger to peel an apple, removing the rind in one long curl, and the blade continues its path as his eyes lift, locking with mine. Do you see what I mean? This guy's dangerous and wants to kill me, but like, we're locking eyes because I'm 12 and a half. Like, this is really weird. That's all I had to say. I, I, I just, I... <laughs> the writing is just driving me absolutely insane. This is very, very YA. And it's, it's, it's creeping me out because he reads older and she reads young. And this is really, like... When I get to the sex scenes, I think I'm going to rip this book in half. Like I'm going, I'm going to read them out loud because I'm sure it's like the cringiest thing ever, but it's, it's grossing me out because I'm in my head this entire time. This girl's like 12. You know what? I'm not done. I'm not done because you know what? Do you know what it's like reading a 500 page book where you wish the main character would fucking drop dead, die a fiery fucking death where all the dragons just burn and char her body <laughs> because that's how I feel about her. That's how I feel about this book. I am sick and tired of reading about this girl who reads like she's 12. I am getting so fucking annoyed. I hate this. I literally, I hate her and she's not gonna die because there's a series. So of course she's gonna live and really all I need to know is does this girl ever die? Like <laughs> I just... <laughs> And it's totally unrealistic too because if she has these like chronic uh, illnesses and, and she's like weak and frail because she's chronically ill and blah blah blah, like realistically she would have dropped dead by now. Like realistically, how is this girl even alive? It doesn't make sense. It literally doesn't make sense. I can't. I can't. Zayden Rorison is kneeling before me, his black hair at the perfect level for me to run my fingers through the thickness. It's probably the only thing that's soft about him. How many women have felt those strands between their fingers and why the hell do I care? I can't. I can't. I can't. If you want to hear a rant review about everything that doesn't make sense about this book, I found uh, Reads with Rachel on YouTube. She filmed like a two and a half hour long rant video about this, literally breaking down every single thing that is inconsistent and doesn't make sense about this book. And then she filmed it part two, that's like an hour and a half long, and I'm making my way through her videos because I'm like, I've noticed that certain things don't make sense. Like this college doesn't make sense. The way that things work doesn't make sense. There are inconsistencies, there are plot holes, and like this is just confusing. And then in the beginning, they gave all this history about this college and things like her mom. Remember when I said like her mom did something and everyone hates her? Like it wasn't even fully explained. Like there are just things that are just thrown around and then not mentioned. And I'm like, wait a second. It doesn't fucking make sense. Like this book actually doesn't make sense. So I highly recommend her videos if you want to hear like a four hour long in-depth rant from someone who's smart, <laughs> go check her out. But um, oh my God, I am like suffering through this. I am starting to suffer. <laughs> I can't. Okay, so I'm back to talk about this fuckery. So I read like another, I don't know, 50 pages or something. Not much has happened. It's just like, she throws in these little like history lessons about their world and their, you know, like it's supposed to be like world building but it's like written in a way that doesn't really make sense and doesn't sink in your brain. Don't remember a single thing that I read about anything to do with their world or their history or anything. It's just kind of like useless information at this point. Um, and then again, not much has happened, dialogue, dialogue. And then there's like a group of students that break into Violet's room and try to kill her and Anne, what is that little dragon's name? I'm looking at my notes. And and Darna uh, like stops it because she freezes time and then Zayden is able to come to her rescue and Zayden um, 
basically hires this guy Liam who he grew up with they were foster together he hires Liam to like be Violet's bodyguard and kind of follow her around and protect her and they are talking and discover that um and Darna is like a child dragon <laughs> and that's why she's so weak she's like a little little baby you know her time stopping power has to be kept a secret because people can like steal it it can be stolen so therefore like it puts them all at risk because she's vulnerable right um yeah right doesn't make sense whatever and now that's it that's all that happened and um zayden is like fighting this guy at the gym you know they, they they fight each other as like exercise okay they're fighting each other and they have their shirts off and she's like oh my god that's so hot look at how many muscles are in the human stomach oh look at his ass look at his chiseled ass and i'm just like this is so cringy this is unbearable this is completely unbearable i started reading some of these things out loud to justin and he was like oh my god stop can't believe how cringy this is because someone was like oh the romance elements aren't super prominent in this book like it might be better for you than agatar no this is actually this might actually be worse for me yeah this might actually be worse in the romance elements like i Someone messaged me on Instagram and said, this feels like I'm reading a book about a 40 year old teacher grooming his 14 year old student. And that's literally how it reads because she reads like a child, like a 14 year old, a 12 year old, like very young, someone who just hit puberty. And he reads like an, like a man. It's like, it's the weirdest thing in the entire world i'm about to get to the sex scenes and i'm like i'm clutching my pearls <laughs> i feel like i'm like my whole pelvic floor is clenched right now <laughs> because i'm like oh my god i have to like release <laughs> i i've been having like major gi issues like i said my stomach is killing me lately it's killing me i'm super bloated all the time something's not right and reading this book is like giving me even more of a stomach ache stomach ache like i'm going to hurl i'm going to vomit everywhere because this is so disgustingly cringy i feel like i'm reading porn but uh, i'm not even gonna go there i i don't know what to do with myself this is so bad this is what you guys are into this is what you're all like Oh my god, fourth wing, everyone's so obsessed with this book. Oh, it's the greatest fantasy book ever written. No, no. I just feel bad for you guys. I don't, you know what, if you like this book, good. I'm glad that you are loving it. But I'm like, oh no, like who hurt you? <laughs> I just, uh, Violet needs therapy. She needs a therapist. This is so... Oh my god why is she so obsessed with this toxic man why what is with the toxic men in these books this is like a book where the main character her only personality trait is like having a crush on a boy dane this is supposed to be like a love triangle where's dane dane just disappears dane is so poor dane poor dane really got the short end of the stick because he is so boring and serves nothing to this book she's just like dane psh, we can go without him for another hundred pages he just kisses her and then he's like sorry we shouldn't be doing that it's inappropriate at school <laughs> and then like he disappears for another hundred pages and i'm like dane dane hello where are you dane are you there <laughs> dane's not there dane left the chat <laughs> oh my god i can't so you're telling me out of nowhere out of nowhere there was nothing like leading up to this there was nothing zayden is giving me no hints he's giving me nothing he's giving me zero percent effort into believing that he has feelings for this girl or that he likes her like nothing he's giving nothing right and then all of a sudden he just leans in and starts making out with her what the fuck i'd be calling the police <laughs> like <laughs> I would be pepper spraying this guy in the fucking eyes at this rate. What the hell 
This is the same problem that I had with Agatar. It's the cringy romance that doesn't make sense, that seems to come out of nowhere. Everything is just... This entire book is carefully craft crafted and curated into... Hi, Snow! <laughs> Everyone is just there to basically serve our main character. Like everything is just set up for her in a way where everything works out perfectly. She has to mention a thousand times to us about how frail and weak she is, but yet nothing bad ever happens to her. Every time she's about to die or something's about to happen to her, she gets rescued. Everyone just throws themselves at her to rescue her at all times. My dog's chewing on a bone. Um, literally every little thing that happens is just like to protect her and move the plot along and now all of a sudden she just keeps getting what she wants and now this evil man that wanted to kill her that hates her so much just randomly starts making out with her i can't stand this shit okay i can't stand this corny ass romance with no chemistry that comes along random no reason like doesn't make sense um this horny ass teenage girl writing every single sentence is like ah, his skin is so smooth his skin looks so smooth oh he smells like mints oh his hair is so thick i wonder what it feels like i wonder how many women have ran their fingers through his hair oh my god it's actually it actually is as soft as i thought it would be oh he smells like mints i just want to fuck him i want to get plowed by him because he smells like breath mints <laughs> literally what is this what is this this is a children's book i swear to god i mm, i hate this girl i hate this main character so much i want her to die and i know she's not gonna die because it's a series but do you know how painful it is wanting someone to die that's not going to die like i i am getting worked up okay stop okay stop i Oh my god are they gonna have sex now oh my god i'm gonna have to call like child protective services okay so i just realized from my notes that i forgot to talk about something the last time we checked in um so we're gonna talk about that and then i'm gonna catch you up on the fuckery that is this book um so you know how i said like her dragon taryn is the mate of zayden's dragon Seagal or whatever the hell her name is um while these dragons they found out that they were mates because Violet could feel her dragon having sex <laughs> she could feel <laughs> she could feel her dragon having sex with this other dragon and he could feel it <laughs> So they could feel the dragon sex like they felt like they were having this dragon sex and then like that's how they discovered that their dragons are mates because they felt all this like sexual energy <laughs> what excuse me what 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 oh my god this this fucking book I can't I <laughs> I am just I'm sweating I'm like I Oh my god, this, this book literally doesn't make sense. So I read a little bit more today. We're gonna catch each other up here. I'm on chapter, hold on a second. I'm on chapter 29. Yeah, I'm on chapter 29. So I am on page 363. Um, no, I'm still not there. I'm still not at the end. I'm, I'm still not at the infamous sex scene. <laughs> just the just the dragon sex um and so far really nothing has happened they, they go through this period of time where they're like oh nothing has happened for a few months and i'm like <laughs> you're telling me that this is some like cutthroat fast-paced crazy school people are just dying people are being picked off left and right in this book it's like you're introduced to people and they just drop dead and you don't care because it's like you don't know anything about them and it's like well why are why are you telling me that all these people are dying but your school is so like they're in such dire need of of riders and you know they have these dragons that need to be bonded but they're refusing to bond with people but they they're in such desperate need uh, uh for riders but yet you're just letting them all kill each other <laughs> 
I can't, it doesn't make sense. Nothing about this school makes any damn sense. So I've kind of been like tuning out if I'm being completely honest because nothing makes sense. No, it doesn't. I'm trying to look at my notes and like my notes don't even make sense. Um, there was just, like I said, nothing was happening for the longest time. Um, there's, there was this thing, oh my goodness. There's like a squad battle. Um, the cadets were instructed to steal something that their enemies would desire. So Violet ended up stealing like her mom's map of the military outposts. And, and there was just like this weird, I don't even know what was going on in this section of the book because I just, I didn't care if I'm being completely honest. And it probably serves no purpose if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, so she got the chance to shadow soldiers on the front lines. Uh, she meets up with her sister. Her sister realizes, oh my god, you're still alive. They reunite, blah, blah, blah. Um, then they're playing a game of capture the flag. Like, <laughs> this school does not make sense. Um, so they're playing a game of capture the flag. And during this game, um, Liam... She saves Liam because Jack tries to kill him and she that is when she discovers her signet or her power that she gets from bonding with the dragon. Like I said, they all get this special power and she's been talking about for 100 pages now that she still doesn't have her signet. She still doesn't have it. She still doesn't have it. Now, finally, she realizes that her signet is the ability to control lightning. So she kills Jack. That's where I left off. Um, th there's only like a hundred and and forty pages left. This this weird sex scene has to be coming up. This book doesn't make sense. It's making less sense as we go on. The world building sucks. I know nothing about this damn world, this school. Not th there's so many freaking plot holes. Like I was saying, there's so many YouTubers that film videos specifically on the plot holes because she mentions one thing and then like later in the book it, it just the math ain't mathing the world building like i said just straight up doesn't make sense it's like we go hundreds of pages without knowing what the hell's going on other than like dialogue and dragon sex <laughs> and these like horny little girl thoughts and the writing is terrible the writing is like so bad so bad this is worse than Agatar. I, you know what? I, as much as I hated the first book of Agatar, when I look back, I'm like, the characters didn't make sense, you know, but at least the book, like the story made sense. This actually doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, sorry, I just got a phone call and I completely lost my train of thought, but whatever. The point is that this book doesn't make sense. And freaking stupid Zayden um, calls her violence, and, but he's the love interest. Ew, gross, problematic, weird. Um, Dane is so freaking uninteresting and boring. Oh, 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 th here's a good one. Dane's signet is that he can read minds, and she doesn't think throughout this entire book that like, oh, um, maybe he's reading my mind right now and can tell that I have this thing going on with Zayden. She's like trying to hide it from people. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. But Dane can read your mind. Like, see what I mean? Doesn't make sense. She gave all these people these signets and then forgot all about them. She was like, oh yeah, um, I forgot that this person can actually do this. It's like plot holes. Like she forgot what's going on in her own story. Okay, so I'm at the sex scene, okay, and the way that this happens is because after she kills Jack, she's all upset about it that she killed someone, and he goes to her room, and he's like, hey, you have to, like, suck it up, buttercup, like, grow some balls, because <laughs> you're gonna have to get used to killing people. It's just, like, natural here. It's just what we do. Um, and he's like, you know, I, I know you're frustrated. You can hit me if you want. And instead, she's like, I'm just gonna kiss you. <laughs> so she kisses him. I kid you not, every single time they kiss in this book, she uses the phrase, gently nipping him with my teeth. Every single 
time. The writing is so bad. And then she keeps doing this thing where she'll like write word period word period word period like it, and it's happened so many times in this book that it's so distracting like blank period blank period blank period like what uh, it's so annoying Ugh. okay anyways back to the smut this is make me want to throw up this is described as a sensual assault that makes me moan he says every single time she walks into a room he gets hard. Keep in mind, in my head, this girl's like 14. I, I'm just saying that's how she it d is described and sounds in this book. But oh, here it is again. He tastes like mint. That's like the third time in this book that she said he smells and tastes like mint. No mention that he's using mints, just that he smells and tastes like them. There is so much mention of her clit. And he's asking her to come on his cock. And the only reason that this is disgusting to me is because this feels like a YA book until this scene. And I feel like I'm mentally scarred. Pushes inside that first tight inch of me and I gasp at the fit, the stretch. This is why I don't read smut. <laughs> He's so fucking deep that I feel him everywhere and everywhere is in italics. Everywhere. Everywhere? Girl. Oh my god. Here we go. Another one. So, period, very, period, beautiful, period. It's like every chapter, something like that. This man kisses with his whole body, rolling his hips in time with the thrust of his tongue, bracing just enough of his weight so I can breathe while stroking his chest over my hypersensitive nipples. She is getting railed so hard that lightning just keeps flashing. Like she's just setting lightning off this entire time. <laughs> so after they have sex, blah, 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 they're back at school and Violet basically tells him that she's not going to have sex with him anymore unless he admits that he has feelings for her or he's going to let her in um, because she says she can't like have sex with him and not have feelings for him so he's like <laughs> you're never gonna get feelings for me and she's like but I already do and then he's like well I would never have feelings for you basically um toxic man literally so toxic it's like your typical like I can't let anyone in because I'm tough and strong Kill me, kill me. How do I still have over a hundred pages of this book left? Okay, hi. So I finished Fourth Wing last night. I don't know how. I don't know how I managed to suffer through this. Um, and I took some notes. They don't make any sense. The, the last hundred pages literally don't make any sense. So I'm gonna try my hardest to explain, but I know I'm not like explaining this correctly because it doesn't make sense to me. So like if you wanna find someone on YouTube that actually does a better job, go for it. So something I quickly wanted to mention, another thing that is just <sighs> so frustrating about this book is the chronic illness uh, representation. So she has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, um, which makes your joints and your body just really unstable. So she's constantly like dislocating her joints and like just things are sliding out of place. And um, apparently the author, Rebecca, has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So I don't really have like an issue with the representation of her like having this illness and constantly being healed, etc. Like, if someone can constantly heal my endometriosis, I would love that. But, um, you know, I, the issue is <laughs> it's not consistent throughout the book, especially in terms of these sex scenes. What I was wondering, like, I'm a therapist. I've had patients with this condition. I've talked to people online that have this condition. And a lot of people say, like, 
their shit slips out of place. Like their, their pelvis has been dislocated by having sex. And I'm like, if she is constantly like, anytime she does anything, something happens to her body, but yet she can get thrown around by this man having this crazy sex and lightning and the fires and <laughs> she's starting a forest fire. And I'm like, okay, if all of that can happen, how? How? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Anyways, <laughs> just a small little thing I wanted to mention. Zayden, I forgot his freaking name. Zayden saw her kissing Dane and was like, oh, I've always wanted to from the beginning. I knew that you were kissing Dane and I didn't like it. I've always wanted you, even though I wanted to kill you. You know, just toxic. Um, she says, I love you. He doesn't say it back. <laughs> of course. It seems like such a great man to get involved with. We had sex once and I love you even though you wanted to kill me a week ago. Um, then this like battle simulation happens called the war games. I don't, I don't, this is the part I, I didn't understand what the hell was going on. So Zayden flies Violet and some other people that are in his little group and he flies them to this outpost and then he tells her that he's been betraying her this entire time. Shocker. Um, because he has been helping these griffin flyers. Okay, <laughs> this is where I was so confused because he says, oh, I've been lying to you. They're not griffin riders, they're griffin flyers. And there's like this whole conversation about griffin riders versus griffin flyers. I don't know, but these griffins, you know, they're like half eagle, half, um, half eagle, half lion type dragons. I, listen, they're like eagle lion things. You know what a griffin is, okay? So he's like, oh, they're griffin flyers and I've been helping them. He's been helping like give them weapons um, and he's been giving them weapons to fight these venom. Is that how you pronounce that? Uh, pe there are people who can tap into magic and steal people's powers. Okay, so he's been helping these griffin flyers fight these venom. Okay, so she's like, oh, how could you betray me? Oh my gosh, but you're so hot. Oh, I just I love you so much. They find a letter um, of an up, they find a letter at the college that there's an upcoming, uh, venom assault or attack. And so they find out that Dane has been betraying her this entire time. Dane, uh, put his hands on her and stole her memories. <laughs> he touches her face and rips out her memories. And then we find out that he's been betraying her. Dane read her memories and then informed the college that they were helping the flyers and then this venom attack is to kill them. <sighs> Fucking Dane. Fucking Dane. It's always the nice guys, right? <laughs> That's why we have to stick to the toxic men. Um, <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to make sense of this and I'm probably wrong, so... <laughs> Yeah, this was rough. Um, so now, you know, Zayden betrayed her, Dane betrayed her, but she's like, okay, well, Zayden was betraying me because he was doing it to protect me. So she's like, oh, Zayden, I love you so much. And then they get into this battle. Please hold. Okay, I'm back. So in this battle, Liam is killed. Violet is stabbed with a poison knife and is dying. <laughs> And then Zayden swears his loyalty to her. So she managed to tame him within 10 pages. That's great. Um, <laughs> she passes out and then she wakes up. She's being healed, of course. She's getting all fixed up. And at the very end, the last thing that happens is she wakes up and her brother is there saying, <laughs> welcome to the resistance. And that's it. That's how the book ends. Her brother's not actually dead. So frustrating. This book was so frustrating. And you know what? Again, again, I didn't mind the fantasy elements, but they just weren't done well. Like, it had all the typical classic 
fantasy things thrown in there with you know dragons and magic and this and that and the college and everything it's like she took the formula for like every popular fantasy book and slapped it all together and didn't develop anything like it could have been really cool it could have been interesting especially with these powers the um I already forgot what the hell they're called uh stignant stick <laughs> see what I mean that's the thing the fantasy elements of this book it's like you forget immediately after you read I'm like what what was that <laughs> It's just, it doesn't stick into your brain. And I've watched a lot of videos where other people said the exact same thing. It just is nothing that like sticks into your mind. And it's like the fantasy elements are the things that you should be remembering if they're done well, you know? Um, but no, it, I just feel like this was very formulaic. Like I'm just going to throw in a bunch of fantasy things and they just weren't developed in a sense where things were mentioned here and there but then they didn't really play a huge role in the book. I feel like the romance elements definitely took over the plot. I feel like some things were mentioned and then later on they were just like okay we're just gonna forget that I mentioned that. It, it just felt very sloppy and lazily uh, written. I just feel like this was something that was slapped together really quick and I'm hearing the same thing about the second one that it was most likely just slapped together super quick because it came out months after this one and people are having, my, sorry my hair is just doing a thing today. Um, a lot of people are having issues with the second book. I just, I, I, I'm definitely not continuing on with this series. It, it drove me that insane. Uh, a lot of things just don't add up. The math ain't mathing. The romance was super cringy. I just can't get into this. I really can't. Uh, I feel like for this one there were just so many problems that I can't look past and uh, if I didn't even understand the first one I'm definitely not understanding the second one. If you want someone that gives a little bit more sense into this book, made a little bit more sense out of it, definitely go check out some other videos on YouTube. But um, I, I really tried my hardest to give you a synopsis that made sense and I don't know if I succeeded in doing that. I probably did not. Um, because this was just, a, a, it was a mess. It was a clusterfuck dumpster fire. That's what this book was, okay? So yeah, that's my review. So Dragon walks into the bar and the bartender's like, hey, I know you. You're that that black dragon from the, the college, the war college, right? And the dragon's like, yeah, listen, listen, I, I'm just not in a good mood today. There's just, there's been a lot going on. Uh, I don't really know if I want to talk about it. And the bartender's like, no, 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 I, I, I get it. I understand. There's a lot of death and tragedy that happens at that college. You know, my daughter died at that college two years ago. And the dragon's like, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. It's It's been really hard for me this week. Um, my writer uh, d discovered that she can feel me having sex. And... She said I wasn't very good.